Welcome back to talk about the homework for unit one, lesson 10, the practice problems. Before we do that, let's do a brief reflection on what we've learned in the lesson. Uh, we went through and we learned that if we apply a sequence of rigid motions, then we find that corresponding sides have equal length and corresponding angles have equal measures. We also learned that by understanding these facts, we don't have to measure everything to be able to figure out how or figure out that things are equal to each other. So the homework today, what we're going to do is we're going to use some of that information to help us speed up the process. First problem here is there's a design of a flag of Trinidad and Toboga. When we look at these, we want to describe a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections that can take the lower left triangle, this triangle, to this triangle. Remember that when we're describing that sequence of rotations, we need to be very, very, or of translations, rotations, and reflections, we need to be very consistent in the way that we talk about this. Lesson four has great examples for how to set that up for the, the wording, but what I'm going to show you and what I'm going to do with you, I'm actually going to do this with this triangle. I want you to think about this triangle as being the same size and how would I work with this? Well, the very first thing that I think of is that I want to look for corresponding points. I know that these two points are corresponding, so I would call this one point A and this one point B. And then I'm going to just look at this triangle, and I'm going to go ahead and translate triangle, I'll call this one triangle 1, and this one triangle 2. So just for the purposes of being able to write my description. So we're going to say let the lower left triangle be 1, triangle number 1, let the upper right triangle be triangle 2. And we'll say this, translate triangle 1 from A to B, and then we are going to rotate triangle the triangle 180 degrees around center B to create triangle number two. Pretty simple, yeah? Perhaps you have another way to do it. I will tell you that you can explore options of, trans of reflection. You can explore other options. Play with those and see what happens. Number two is a picture of an older version of the flag of Great Britain. There's, there is a grid or a rigid transformation that takes triangle one to triangle two. Another that takes triangle one to triangle three, and another that takes triangle one to triangle four. The questions for this come in right here. Measure the lengths of side of triangle one and triangle two, and what do you notice? What are the side lengths of triangle three? Explain how you know. And do all eight triangles in the flag have the same area? When we look at these pieces and we start thinking about those questions, the side length of triangle one and triangle two, the lengths of the sides of triangle one and two. Let's go ahead and look at that. So the lengths over here, we have the first side right here appears to be 12 millimeters or 1.2 millimeters. We look at this side over here, it's corresponding side, and we see the exact same thing. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and look at three and four. Three, hey look, 1.2 millimeters and our centimeters and 1.2 centimeters. So let's look at the longer lower side here and we see that that's two and a half centimeters. This one is two and a half centimeters. What do you suppose will happen with three and four? Well, if this one, if these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal, then by the transitive law, these two sides of the triangle must also be equal. And by rigid motion, if this one is the same, two and a half, by rigid motion, it's very likely that three and four are also the same. So what can I say? Let's go back to these ones and figure this out and say, the measure of the sides of the triangle are one and two. What do you notice? Well, corresponding sides have equal length. says, what are the side lengths of triangle three? Explain how you know. Well, they're going to be equal to triangles one and triangle two because of a reflection. That's, that's our big piece with it. If I can reflect this triangle across a line right here in the middle, I would get triangle three. I could rotate triangle one 180 degrees around the center and get triangle four. 
I could reflect triangle 1 across a vertical line to get triangle 2. How do I know that all these angles are equal to each other? My explain how I know comes all the way down to that exact same thing is that rigid transformations preserve length of segments and angle measures. That's my big how do you know reason for all of these pieces. It says do all eight triangles in the flag have the same area? Explain how you know. Um, no, they don't. Are the sizes the same? Since they're not, then are these two triangles equal to each other? Did rigid motion, rigid transformation take triangle one to this triangle? or this triangle. Now these four are probably the same. We would have to check and measure, but we know that they're not the same size, and same shape, and same measures as a triangles one, two, three, and four. So do they have the same area? No, they don't because these triangles are a larger size than these triangles. Moving on, which of the lines in the picture are parallel, is parallel to line L? Explain how you know. So line L, how could we know? Well, my first thought with that is that I'm going to go, have to go ahead and take this line right here and I'm going to draw line L and then I'm going to take just a little tiny piece of line P and I'm going to rotate this, this line. Actually, I'm going to flip it around, rotate it 180 degrees and you see the same line. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so that it comes to this line. But in order to do that, I need to find a midpoint between the two figures. I see one and six tenths centimeters. So halfway between there will be eight tenths. We're going to put a little point right there and we're going to go ahead and rotate 180 degrees. If I rotate 180 degrees around this point, around the midpoint, then these two lines should, or if they are parallel, then I see that relationship and know, oh my goodness, there it is. Explain how to translate rotate, right? It says which of the lines in this picture is parallel to line L. I know that line K is parallel to line L because of a rotation. Rotation of 180 degrees around midpoint. Why don't we call that midpoint Q? It's a midpoint between these two lines, made that, that piece. A rotation around a midpoint here, I mean, we can, we can clearly see that the distance from M to K and M to K at this end are not equal. So that tells us that M is not parallel to K, which means that M can't be parallel to L. Explain how you translate, rotate, or reflect line L to obtain line K. Well, I just did that right there with a rotation of 180 degrees around midpoint Q. I could also do something else with this. I could simply translate line L along segment P, but I would need to name these two points as well. Explain how to translate, rotate, or reflect line L to obtain line P. Well, how would I do that to obtain line P? I'd have to look at this and perform a rotation of a certain number of degrees. Well, you remember in the last couple lessons ago, we talked about rotation of D degrees. That would be the piece there, or I can re pull out a protractor and measure that. Since I don't have those, I'm just going to say that how I could rotate around the center of those two lines where they have a common center point until line L matches line P or maps line P. For number four, a certain point A has a coordinate of three, four after translation of four units left, a reflection across the X axis and a translation of two unit down. What are the coordinates of the image? I'm going to tell you right here to draw it out and see what you can come up with. Or if you can come up with it algebraically and you can tell me the process of how to use this with coordinates, translating to units left, which one of these coordinates translates left, and then how does the reflection across the axis happen, and then what happens when we translate two units down. Keep that in mind and see what you can, what you can come up with. Otherwise, if you can't figure that out algebraically, then draw it out. 
We haven't spent any time working on the algebraically, so don't feel bad if you can't do it that way. That's a challenge question and a way that should that could push your thinking a little bit more. I would suggest draw it out, be very certain where it is, and then if you want to pursue the time after that to test it, go for it. And here's the final piece. Here's triangle XYZ. Draw these three rotations of triangle XYZ together. So we're going to do all three of these on the same picture. It says rotate triangle XYZ 90 degrees clockwise around Z. So when we see that rotation of 90 degrees clockwise, we're going to see that this segment right here is going to help us to know that 90 degrees approximately. 90 degrees around Z clockwise is going to be 90 degrees this way. And we see that it's just a little bit further than that. So we have to understand, well, where is 90 degrees? Take the corner of a piece of paper or something else and know that 90 degrees comes to right here. So now I'm going to take my triangle, rotate around center Z 90 degrees. And then I'm going to draw that figure in. Little gap in between. That's okay. And that says rotate the triangle 180 degrees around center Z. So we'll see that piece where we rotate 180 degrees. I know that a 180 degree rotation is going around a point that's connected to the line is going to be an overlap of points. So we'll come out to here. And then finally, we'll end up with the last one of rotating 100 or 270 degrees to right here. And hopefully what you will see might just be a little pinwheel. That's it for the homework. I know I went through it kind of fast. I'm challenging you on this unit to apply everything that you've done in all the other lessons. I'm, I'm really pushing it back onto you with this, with minimal guidance today, to be able to come through and nail all this because you've got this. So don't you dare give up and then have a great day.